Today we'll have a look at a fascinating pen that I ran into and I was able to purchase it with a very good discount and I found it a very very fascinating model. Um, and it is a Visconti pen and out comes the pen. It comes in a very cool black themed box. You can see how reflective this is. Very very fascinating um, box I thought. Very nice lacquer. And when it pops open, out comes the pen. This is the pen. I'll show you the pen in a second in some more detail. You can take out the little pen bed. And then you get a little booklet. This is the Visconti Istos Arachnis, which is uh, Greek for spider's web. Has a nice illustrated booklet. They've really gone for a black and white theme on this pen, which I very much enjoy. There was also a rose gold model, which was very cool, but that's even more expensive than this one. Um, it's a bit of a, an Art Nouveau style pen, uh, given the the, uh, the the decoration on it. The booklet has filling instructions and all that, and it has the uh, identity card. It's a limited edition, 888 pens were made, and this is number 165. Okay, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. This is not a small pen, uh, it is definitely an, an oversized uh, pen model. It's big, it has girth, and it's long. Um, I won't say that's what she said, I guess I just did. This is the top of the cap. Um, uh, this is the first Visconti pen I've seen that does not have that My Pen system. So you cannot pop this off a little magnet and put gemstones on it or something. This is what you get. It's also a bit bigger than I, what I've seen so far. Okay, then we have the uh, uh, clip mold of, modeled after the uh, Ponte Vecchio in Florence spring-loaded. I've always enjoyed that system a lot. You can see the enamel and the Visconti name on there. Of course, what makes this pen really cool is the spider web and the spider. Um, I don't, I'm not, some people are fans of spiders. I'm definitely not. I, I really don't like them, but I, I fell in love with the size of the pen. Um, acrylic, black acrylic with a 92 point five percent silver overlay and that has been made white and you end up with a very nice spider web and spider okay I'm usually not a big fan of overlay pens pens that have this it can be a little sharp it can be a little um, sharp on the, the hand this pen does have that issue but it doesn't really bother me. It's not so sharp that it really cuts into your skin. As you can see, it's definitely a big pen. Uh, it's it's uh, beefy. But the interesting thing is, it's not super heavy. You can post it if you want to. That's ridiculous. I very much enjoyed the balance. I'll come back to that in a second. You have large threads here, then a section that is uh, slightly hourglass shaped, very mildly and then a palladium large nib. This is medium nib. I like Visconti's palladium nibs. They have some scroll work on them and uh, usually they are a little springy and this one's particularly springy. Very very pleasant to use. The pen uses Visconti's power filler system which means you unscrew this bit and then you have a, a secondary small ink chamber there, large chamber in the barrel and you draw up ink through a vacuum mechanism. I have discussed that before. And finally on the bottom there you have 165 of 888. That's how many pens there are. Okay, so those are the parts of the pen. I have to show you the spider again just because it's cool. That's a spider. Um, I love oversized pens. My hands are not small and then smaller pens, pens like this, uh, they, they tend to disappear. So I like them when they are a bit bigger and this one hits all the marks. It has the girth and it has the length and for me this grip section size is very comfortable. It's just what I like. What I noted about this pen is it's relatively light. Yes, it has silver which adds a little bit of weight but in all it's very well balanced. 
and with the bigger section uh, I absolutely love that. Also I like the fact that these threads are not sharp at all. They are a very nice well cut rounded off shape uh, which means they don't cut into your fingers at all. I love the ink window of course with a power filler the coolest thing is if you have a demonstrator like on my Opera Master where you can currently it's it is inked up but you can see the mechanism more with this pen you cannot but because you have the ink window you know how much ink you have left this pen has a superbly tuned nib which is definitely on the wet side one page of writing and I empty out that reservoir so it definitely um, guzzles through ink but because it has a pretty big barrel it also holds a lot of ink this is an expensive pen a limited edition pen is something you typically will pay a lot for and I'm sure that a lot of people would find the price to be above a level that they can justify that's fine um, I saw this pen I fell in love with it and this is the the sort of indulge yourself once in a while theory thing going on here having said that uh, I think that these pens are very fascinating I can definitely see how these would not uh, agree with some people I think Visconti has stopped just short of making this gaudy um, I think it's a very very fascinating model let's take a couple of measurements and then I'll do a writing sample and then we'll see how it holds up there length capped is a good 149.8 millimeters or 5.9 inches uncapped it is 136.9 or 5.39 inches section diameter is 11.8 or 0.46 inches to 12.4 or 0.48 inches barrel diameter is big at 14.8 or 0.58 inches and that is a consistent uh, diameter it only tapers down a little bit at the turning knob there okay just inked up so this is full of ink and um, capped it has a weight of 52 grams so as I said it's not a super light one but because it is so well balanced because of the nice big section I don't really notice the weight when I write with it I can write with this pen for a long time I just used it in a lecture where I was taking notes. I wrote five pages uninterruptedly in two hours and my hands did not wear out. It, I just didn't feel my wrists or fingers get tired. I think that's a very, very good sign. Okay, let's see how the pen writes. That's what we'll do next. Hope this was useful so far and I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. All right, so here we go with the Visconti Ictos Arachnis with a medium nib in 23 carat palladium and Gerbin Lidete see that? yeah let's do a bit of writing I find this pen to be very pleasant in writing. The nib, uh, the quick brown fox jumping, hmm. uh, I find it a very pleasant pen. The nib is nice, definitely on the wet side, and I'm using a fairly dry ink here. So in our wetness test it may show up as being not particularly wet, but it is in fact a nice wet pen, and if I write one page of text uh, can't talk and write so quickly at the same time uh, if I write one page of text I have to refill the secondary um, ink reservoir okay the lazy dog let's do let's look at that wetness For a relatively dry ink, I think this is a good illustration of the pen's wetness. Okay, let's look at line variation. Very pleasant, and as you can see, even with quite some line variation, the pen just keeps flowing. There is no railroading. 
as I said, a nice wet nib that does allow for some pretty cool line variation work, which I think is very nice because these nibs are not advertised as flex nibs, but the palladium nibs really have nice spring to it. Uh, I do think this is a somewhat fine nib to start with, but if you absolutely need to have an even finer nib, you can turn it around. But as you can see, the writing gets very light. Again, a, light, a, a drier ink, but even so, it gets very light. I don't think you can really make legible writing with it as such. All right. That is the Ictos Arachnis. I hope this was useful. And I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. It's a spider.